I guess, what is a brain versus the nervous system? Like, where is most of the cognition computation going on? Yeah, yeah. You could see that in organisms. Like, uh, actually, I, I, I don't know how the brain evolved. Like, why does it have to be in one place? Doesn't what? have to be. So my favorite word, word of the day, is liquid brains, right? This idea of distributed cognition, which, um, fascinating idea. And we've come to understand how much uh, distributed cognition there is. Obviously, you social animals like termites, et cetera, mm -hmm. and ants, that's an example of distributed cognition. The organism is the whole colony. This is one thing that's been really interesting in the state of the study when we cut to for aliens is that what we've come to recognize is that human intelligence, it's not actually, it's been distributed. The kinds of things that go into intelligence are distributed all across the biosphere. Lots of different examples of things show various pieces of what we have. Jason Wright will describe it as like a deck of cards. The cards are all there. We got the hand that actually led to the kind of technological progress that we we see. But the kinds of, you know, the basic idea of using tools, the basic idea of recognizing each other eye to eye, all the things that we define as intelligence, you can find many places in many other um, uh, places across, many other line, lineages across the earth. So it could be, they could be very, very different with something like, yeah, maybe that's, you know, the hive mind idea or, you know, bacterial colonies that actually managed to, you know, come to their own version of high cognition. Well, I wonder if there's, if we stretch out time across tens, 20, 20 billion years, whether there's a Darwinian evolution stops working at some point in terms of the biology or the chemistry of the organisms and it switches to ideas, yeah. for example. It's much more rapidly you're operating, maybe I guess it's a kind of Darwinian evolution on the space of memes or whatever. As, 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 as Technology seems to operate on, in, 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 you know, but certainly markets can operate in ways that look very Darwinian. So basically a planet is working hard to get to uh, the first kind of organism that's able to be a nice platform for ideas to compete. Yeah. And then it kind of stops evolving there. And then, then it's ideas that take off. Right, right. Because, yeah, cultural, it's true. It's amazing that cultural evolution totally disconnects from, from the Darwinian process. But I'd be careful to say that, like, a planet is working hard to do this. Because, you know, it's really important looking at us, like, what we think of as ideas and culture. And, you know, it's quite possible we're going to make it another 200 years and this is gone, right? Because it actually wasn't a very good idea long term. I mean, we just don't know. Oh, so maybe the idea generation organism is actually the thing that destroys not the biosphere because again but it destroys itself it may not be very long term it may be very potent for a short period of time but that it's not sustainable it doesn't become like we were talking about before mature it's very hard to make it into integrated into a mature bio slash technosphere and of course you know evolution is not working for anything well, here's the actually interesting thing, right? So people are very much, you know, evolutionary biologists will get very, their hair will stand on it. And if you start talking about evolution having a purpose or anything, but the very interesting thing about purpose is that once you do get to a idea generating species or collective organism, um, yeah, then, uh, you know, kind of all bets are off and there is goals. There is teleology. There is a, you know, there now suddenly you know, absolutely there's a direction implied. So that's kind of the cool, interesting thing that once you get to that, evolution stops being goalless and directionless and suddenly, yeah, we're the ones who supply or any kind of creature like us has an absolute direction that way they, they decide on. Although you could argue that from a perspective of the entire human civilization, we're also directionless. We have a sense that there's a direction in this cluster of humans, yeah, and then there's another cluster that has a different yeah. sense of direction. There's all kinds of religions that are competing. There's different ideologies that are competing. Yeah, and when you just zoom out across, if we survive across thousands of years, it will seem directionless. It will seem like a it's a pinball. Mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's an unholy mess. But you know, but at some point, like the expansion into the solar system, say, like that would be both direction. I mean. Depending on how you look at it, it was directional. There was a there was a decision that the collective of human beings made to like anti-accrete to start spreading out into the solar system. So there was definitely a goal there that may have been reached in some crazy sort of you know non-linear way, but it was still right. There was still it's still a goal was set and it was achieved.